Hello, folks. Um, the brew dude, Jose, asked me to do a hangout with him. Hello, Jose. You asked me to do a hangout with you, and you have the big bottle, and I have the little bottle. And we're doing Corbell yeah. XS Brandy. Now, I did a hangout. A, uh, initial review with Tanya Mikowski. She had talked about doing Corbell and she tried a bunch of different ones and then she said she had the excess left. That was the one she had left and she really liked it. So then you had found out about it and then you wanted to do it and you found some time this evening. So um, what's your experience with this brandy or with, with brandy in general really? You know, I, I, I don't have a lot of experience with brandy. Um, never really you know, ventured into the brandy lines or anything. I did stick with whiskey, a little scotch, but brandy, this is brand new to me. Yeah. You know, um, I was just curious, because when I started kind of dipping into wine in 2011, I did those, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, People said, what about hard liquor? I said, no, no, I, I don't mess with that. And it wasn't because I was necessarily opposed to it. I just felt like I'm doing beer and I'm going to get caught up in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just avoided it just for that reason. It's like the, the same reason I didn't want to watch baseball because I said, I know I'll get caught up in it. But um, I said, oh, heck, what's the difference? I'm not going to live like a thousand years. So I got all this time to just wait, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I said, and then when I started looking at hard liquor, I said, Brandy, I had read about a battle in American history, the Battle of Brandywine Creek, and they explained why they called it Brandywine and blah, blah, blah. And I started getting interested. And then I noticed that nobody else was really doing videos. It was sort of like a dead world. Everybody did, uh, you know, bourbon and whiskey. You know? I said, well, heck, if nobody's doing brandy, then of course I'll do it. And it, it's a fascinating little I should say little because it's the second largest selling distilled beverage in the United States behind whiskeys. According to the U S government, they have these stats. And so it is big, but um, you know, you all, what do we hear about gin and rum? But, but, but vodka it, and yeah, else, but not brand. Yeah. But distilled beverage in the United oh, States wait, behind wait, whiskeys. Wait. Let me fix According this. to the U S government, they have these stats and so it is big, but um, you know, I'm playing it. I'm setting this up so that people can um, make comments, but <laughs> I forgot to mute it. So it's playing what I'm saying, but um, okay. it, it is the number two behind whiskey. But you know, when they say whiskey, they're talking about bourbon, whiskey, blended whiskey, Canadian whiskey, you know, everything. And it's like the biggest part of the, of the liquor world. And then behind that is everything else. But um, so you're big into whiskey, right? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I do more. You know, I do whiskey as well. But uh, that whole whiskey umbrella, you know, and scotch and, and bourbon. But uh, I do a lot of beer. But I do venture. If I'm venturing into hard liquor or any type of distilled beverage, it's going to be uh, uh, scotch in that area. Every time that I do a little bit, a little bit of vodka, but not not enough for me to even have any true idea of the different vodkas right. out there. And I don't know anything about whiskey aside from that, you know, it's made from a certain type of ingredients, but it's so big. And, and so I don't know where it's going to go. Like with brandy, I said, oh, well, <laughs> this is my ignorance, right? I said, oh, well, there's probably five or six different brandy brands no. out there. And I'll look at those and I'll, and I started ex exploring and I'm like, oh, there's like 5,000. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And then whiskey, I go to the store today. I'm like overwhelmed by this. I was in Albertsons and I'm overwhelmed. It's just like, it seemed like they were thousands on the shelf and I couldn't get over it. So of course I was drawn to the most oddball ones that everybody's going to roll their eyes at. But I mean, yeah, I want to get to the really good ones too as well. And yeah, see, the, the thing about whiskey is, I mean, it's, you know, there's the whiskey bourbons, the Irish whiskeys, the Scotch whiskeys, you know, they all have 
in order for them to be categorized in specifics, they need to follow a specific um, distillation right. guideline, you know. And but at the end of the day, they're all under that whiskey umbrella. Right. And I was looking at the government, U.S. government website, which is fascinating. I mean, you get caught talk about getting caught up in something, and um, they explain everything. Blended whiskey, Canadian whiskey. And they go through all these details. And then they even have, I was talking about this when I did a port wine, a tawny port wine video earlier tonight. They even have guidelines for mixed drinks. Yep. <laughs> what they're supposed to taste like, what they're supposed to use. So I said, wow. How yeah. now the Corbell brandy, that's a beautiful bottle you have. I have the small flask. I paid about five bucks for this here locally. Um, I got this bad boy for uh, eleven ninety nine. Oh, what a deal! Yeah. I don't know if this particular one is available here anymore. I have a link to the Corbell website, and they're saying uh, vanilla infused, slow mm -hmm. barrel aged, and expertly handcrafted. Of course, the final, the finest vanilla, natural orange essence. <laughs> Fragrant spices and a balanced hint of pure cane sugar mm -hmm. for a distinctly smooth exotic taste. And uh, I saw this I in a store here in my town, and um, it was covered with dust. And it was like at the back of the bottom of the shelf, like they had discontinued it, but they still had a few left over. And I asked the lady, I said, "What is that?" Oh, I don't know. And it was like. I think after tax it came up to 504 that's what it was 504 <laughs> after tax and i didn't argue i said well i may never see it again i i haven't seen it anywhere now the corbell california brandy yes we get that at a local store about 25 miles from here in that size bottle so you've had that before uh no no i haven't had it before this this here like i said uh the only real brandy i've really had is uh Growing up, my parents drank Presidente. Oh, right, from Mexico. Yeah, uh, but that's that's really it when it comes to brandy. Okay, and I need to explore that one because um, from what I understand, that's a big deal. Yeah. That Presidente. Oh. They, so I guess we'll get into it. Um, you can see I drank a little of this 200 milliliter. Um, Yeah, you, you, you did a little, like I said, I just poured it. I haven't even tasted it. I did look at the uh, some distiller notes on the Corbell Brandy website and how it's uh, aged in an oak barrel, uh, infused with vanilla and some orange and some pure cane. Growing up, in, I always was able to get pure cane, uh, sugar cane, so I, I enjoyed chewing it. My uncle lived in Arizona and a lot of farming going on out there, and he had cane fields and I mean their sugar cane is just uh, it's an exceptional flavor when it comes to just the true uh, sugar so I'm excited to even try this uh, just from the head and I mean the, the look itself it has that nice um, it's, it's almost a, a nice kind of charred yeah. oak color honey dark honey it refracts the light wonderful one just wonderful and uh, um, we have a lot of cane sugar cane farms around here that's awesome you can smell them when they you can smell it when they burn that the like they they set fires in the sugar cane fields to burn the uh, like weeds and it doesn't yeah. burn the cane and then they that's before they start chopping it down but it's a big deal here and it also in Florida so but anyway uh, yeah you're right it smells you 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 give us some yeah so the the nose on it what I'm getting is I'm I'm definitely getting vanilla a lot of vanilla that is yeah which which smooths out that just aroma um, I get a little citrus more of citrus rind but not a lot it's more that sugary vanilla scent and I, I, I smell the alcohol in the back notes, but because of that vanilla and sugar cane, it almost kind of buffers it a bit. So it's so it, it I haven't tasted it, but it is called extra smooth. Yeah. But it's great to be able to get that also from the scent. And you know. 
And uh, now the, the one you said you had before, the Presidente, which I can get, that's a straight brandy, no flavorings. And you said that's a pretty good quality product. It's good. It's good. It is. It's not a, you're right. It's not an infused brandy or anything. It's not an easy, I don't want to call it harsh either, but it is a strong brandy. It is a raw brandy, you know, so. Yeah, and I read an article. Out here. Down here, what now? I said out here, um, a lot of people use that Presidente brandy. They mix it a little bit with like Coke or some kind of cola product, a little ice and just a, a little lemon wedge. But uh, then there's other people that just drink it straight. You know? I read an article. I don't see it. Go ahead. I read an article in it, and I think it was the New York Times magazine, uh, New York Times newspaper, and they were saying that um, in Mexico, it's like a thing down there that people in the evening, like around six in the evening, close to your time, they'll sit out when it's kind of cool and they'll sip on Presidente brandy. <laughs> yeah. I think the sipping is more of like, uh, you know, uh, small gulps. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true, though. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So it does have an interesting aroma. It's, it's not super boozy. I mean, yeah, at 80 proof, it's going to have a booze aroma, right? Yeah. But if you don't like booze, this is not for you. But they're they're trying to appeal to the crowd that likes the flavorings, right? And that's a huge crowd. Yeah. I mean, just off the smell, it almost even smells like some type of dessert brandy. You know, it's that vanilla just in, is infused in there. I don't get a lot of the charred oak. No. I get slight, slight bit in the back, but that vanilla just, it's right. In, and that sugar cane is just right, right there in your nose. Okay, well, let's start drinking it. Let's, let's taste this bad boy. <sighs> Whoa. Hmm. Whoa, this is the seventh day of Christmas. This is a lot of Christmas cheer in this glass. That's a lot, yep. Yeah. Wow. Not exactly what I expected, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It actually is. Um, there's a little more sweetness that I expected in it. Uh, the vanilla is like it just coats the sweetness sugar cane and the vanilla just coat your mouth and and your palate and everything which like I said almost create like some type of barrier for the alcohol because you are gonna get an 80 proof you are gonna get 40% straight alcohol and it's gonna feel a certain way what I've learned when I do taste any distilled products is when I do drink I I, uh, I excel through my nose and I get the true flavors after and I gotta say uh, it's not what I expected but it definitely is something that I'm glad I got this bottle you know, uh, I do taste the charred oak now the flavor of the charred oak is more in the flavor rather than in the nose I do taste that in the background almost like I guess kind of like how you explained it when when they burn down the weeds and everything so you have a little smokiness in the background yeah, and don't you wow. find don't you find it has like almost even like a little peppery note of some sort? Like I don't know what is it, cinnamon or pepper or some kind of pepperiness. I can't describe it. Yeah, and I also get a little bit of like like almond, mm. a little toasted almond in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's definitely the sugar from the sugar cane. Exactly. But. Uh, this seems like somebody at Corbell must have said, hey, let's make a brandy for the holiday season because it seems like it's the perfect type drink for that, doesn't it? Yeah, it tastes this. You know, I don't want to compare it to any other specific spirit or, or distilled product, but it has this almost like a freshness feel to your mouth because the alcohol just coats it and when you breathe it just kind of cools it down and with the vanilla and with the orange and with the kind of amaretto feel but still with the strength of the distilled beverage it um it just it's perfect with the holidays i'm a, i like drinking eggnog and i usually make an eggnog drink 
I think this would probably even fit perfect for someone who does like to drink the eggnog and would like to add a little bit of the brandy in there that's because you do Tanya, have that vanilla. That's what that's what Tanya was saying. Now, uh, the over easy one two three says Happy New Year, Jay. I'm cruising. <laughs> I'm cruising with a. <laughs> I'm cruising with a 12 pack of Milwaukee's best light. Well, that's a good thing because that's relatively hoppier than other light beers. Lawrence says, Happy New Year. Yeehaw, Dunkel here. A Dunkel. Oh, yes. Oh. I, I, I'm very favorable towards anything that has the word Dunkel in it. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I have a uh, nice uh, 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 <sighs> Schneider, and, Schneider and Sons of Ventimus in my. Uh, refrigerator right now uh, i mean aventinus i call it aventinus i don't know how you say it. that is one of the top beers in the world as far as my experience of drinking beer oh it's it's freaking awesome that is a jewel if they ever had a jewel well anyway back to this uh corbell you know they've been <laughs> making brandy and wine they, they're a big time champagne company sparkling wine company that's their main thing, sparkling wine and brandy. They've been doing this since the 1880s. I'm thinking they know what they're doing. Yeah, seriously. They're part of a huge company called, called um, uh, let's see, who is it? It's, uh, I think it's Brown Foreman, which is a, a company, you know, they have hundreds of brands of anything you can think of. These are like experts of the experts. So, I mean, what do you expect? Yeah, it's macro, but honestly, I don't care about that. I, I'm, I'm worried about what I'm drinking, not – maybe I should be part of the great social um, consideration of corporate ownership, but I really just don't care. I, I'm just drinking it for what it is. Exactly. And at the end of the day, I mean, even, you know, macro, micro, crap, whatever you want to call it, that all kind of pertains to the amount of barrels you're popping out a year, you know. So um, at the end of the day, if you enjoy the product and you're drinking it, regardless of what product it is, you know, that's, 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 the, that's the main reason why we are in this right. hobby or, or, or lifestyle or culture, whatever, whatever it's called. You know, and, and on the flip side, yeah, the drinking culture. And on the flip side, if, it was, if there's a mom and pop brandy, distiller around me and they make good stuff of course i'm going to drink it and of course i'm going to brag on it you know so it's not an either or thing it's a both i'm a consumer i'm not a i'm not part of some great movement exactly case, other people there they might be part of a movement i'm just not it's not a movement for me it's but anyway back to this i think it's dynamite but this is my opinion i would highly recommend it and and I don't know if I would buy it again only because of the the situation of I have limited time like my life and I want to try so many other brands but if I didn't buy it again it wouldn't be any knock against the product it would just be a time thing now if I would if I could live forever on this planet well yeah I would just keep buying it because but time is a consideration so I'm restrained by time and space so I have to say okay I might have to skip over it only because I want to go through that long march of the of the brands. Otherwise, I would highly recommend this. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna turn the floor over to you. Same here. Um, just to just to cover the quick note on here, I do I get a little peppermint in there. I'm not sure if that's just me or something. Or, yeah, that's what I was saying. Pepper, you know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah, same here. It's not something that I would just drink on a. Uh, you know, kind of throughout the year, but kind of stick it closer to this holiday season. Cause like I said, I do drink eggnog and I usually yeah. mix my eggnog with something like sailor Jerry's rum or, or some type of uh captain Morgan spiced rum. Oh yeah. But even this brandy here, because of the, the spicy notes, that peppermint notes, the sweet vanilla, a little bit of orange, a little bit of smoke. Um, I think would be great where I have not ever had it before. I think it would be something that I would buy, especially for eleven ninety nine. Come on, that's like free, and uh, and use it for the holiday season as for eggnog or whatever the case is, or on some ice, or even some after a nice heavy meal to settle the stomach. Yeah, don't you think it has a pretty nice mouth feel? I like the. Oh man, it's not too heavy. It's got body, but it's not like heavy and gross. And 
but even the, the after the what it leaves you be leaves behind that taste in your mouth is just it's delicious yeah well this but the thing about this now it makes me want to try all their other stuff so it's like a <laughs> it's a lead-in right because like yeah. look at their website I'm looking at their website they've got this oh yeah but they're saying now California brandy that's their original then they've got what we're drinking the VSOP it's like heck I would try it and then there's one called Corbell 12 12 yep Oh man, age 12 years and it's in a special tight bottle. It's like, I'm sure it costs a little more than what we're drinking tonight. <laughs> Don't you think? Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I mean, you said you have even a smaller, you have a smaller bottle, so I'm sure it probably can, you know, found in a little smaller, even this little tasters, you know. Yeah, I have a flask bottle. This is designed for people that are going fishing or going to work <laughs> I hate to say that but um you know it's true but um but it's for convenience but the the aged I would like to try this age 12 years and then there's something called an old-fashioned contest because a brandy old-fashioned is a thing now you see um, yeah it's 125 years sweepstakes well I'm not gonna read about that but uh, but that might be something to look at though uh, Shannon and her cocktail and autumn day old-fashioned. Oh, she won. I see this lady Shannon entered the contest and She won the she made their favorite Brandy old-fashioned and so she got to go on a tour of the winery and They put her and then they had some other people that were in the contest. Oh, that's pretty cool these different bartenders one two three four five six and then she was the one winner of the six uh, people. Oh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, I've been noticing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know whether it's distilleries or breweries are doing a lot of those contests. You know, uh, they're promoting yeah, because, their contests. That way, we can you know get get new consumers or get new people. You know, whatever the case is. But I think it's awesome. Yeah, and it gets people involved and it gets them excited and it's saying um, oh look it doesn't have to be oh I drank this and I had it with this mix it's saying no you can do all these things it's not limited um, it, it can be like this huge and that that's where I was scared to get involved in it because then it's like this whirlwind and you get sucked up in it well just like this Lorena we, you know you went out on a limb and said, you know what, what the heck, I'm going to grab this small bottle of Corbell's. But then you explored the website and then there's four other ones, and about 10 other brandies, and then there's 40 other ones. And then you're just, and those 40 have something tied to them and it's never ending. It's a right. spider web, man. Right. Like I do Louisiana beer reviews, but literally, I mean, literally, you could just make a YouTube channel only doing brandy. And you could do one a day and you would never run out. Seriously. You could do, like you say, straight whiskey. You could do one a day. You would never run out. You'd run out of money. <laughs> and your your uh, physical health would break down. But I'm saying, you know, it's I'm only talking numbers. Yeah. You would not run out. It's like beer. You cannot run out. You cannot run out of wine. You cannot run out of beer. You cannot run out of brandy, gin, rum, um, the whiskeys. It it does not. It is an unbelievable exploration of brands. And before we end, I mean, I think this is a dynamite product. But um, I just do this stuff as a hobby and. And I like to look at brands and their history and who started it and what ingredients they used and how it might have been popular and then it died and it came back. I'm not really into into the drinking scene any more than that. That's just me. I, I used to teach history and um, I just like that. So it's sort of like a geek approach. Like I'm all jacked up about reading about the brands. All the rest of the stuff, I don't really care. I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't care. I just drank it, and it's, it's fascinating in that sense. All the other drama and all that, I don't care. I really don't care. Sorry, I don't yeah, care. Same, yeah, same here. It, like, it, it's about the experience. Usually it's the experience that I have while I have enjoying this. Like right now, you and I, 
are uh, many, many, many miles away. Right. We can sit here together mutually to enjoy a nice small glass, to talk about it, enjoy it. And that's really it. That's that's where my passion for this hobby, for this culture is. Right. And on the flip side, if we, let's just say we did one that was really bad, we would say it, you know, it's bad. And then we'd go off and talk about, oh, it's bad. And we'd make little jokes and laugh and all, but it would be no big deal. It would be like, okay, you're the company. You put this junk out. You know, it was bad. You didn't care. And uh, we we did a video and we we called you out on it. I mean, we're not mad about it. We know that there's a lot of people that um, drink for uh, the effects more than the uh, assessment of it. And I understand that. I talked to somebody in Walmart today that said the exact same thing. I, I was looking at what he was buying and I was thinking, oh my goodness, a vodka. <laughs> I said, is that a good vodka? He said, oh no. He said, look at this bottle. You know it's no good. He said, it's nine ninety five. He said, we're making jello shots. We're not buying this for quality. It's New Year's Eve. Yeah. We're buying it. I said, oh, okay, so you're buying it for the the price and the alcohol content. I yeah. said, you're not going to sit there and, and smell it and then assess it, right? Oh, no. He said, oh, no. So, but then those are interesting to look at because it's like, why does this exist? You know, like, why is this in a store? But then there's people buying it like all day long. It's like, oh Lord, and they're admitting when they buy it that it's horrendous, you know. <laughs> and they're just and they're just going for, uh, just to be blunt about it, is to to get drunk, you know, uh, to feel the effects of the alcohol, uh, and that's really it. That's what they're buying it for, you know. They, there's no care, which is fine, you know. Hey, you know, uh, you you do as you please with your own uh, time. That's fine, and I will do as I please with my own. And there's going to be some payback tomorrow. Uh, yeah, when they a lot. they're gonna have a rough Sunday, January first, twenty seventeen, I believe. They're gonna have to pick out some of the micheladas to try to to try to uh, even it out. Uh, do you think Michel michelada sales are gonna spike tomorrow morning? <laughs> oh, oh yes, oh yes. Now, Jergili Jer Kodolanyi says Happy New Year, Ronald. Well, you know what? I want to say Happy New Year back to you, Kogili. And he says, greetings from London and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the United Kingdom, UK. Hey, you know what? Greetings back to you. Now, we're finished. I think we both agreed that this is a really nice item for a, 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 a good price. Mm -hmm. I may never have another spiced or flavored brandy again in my life. But, and it's not really my thing, honestly, because I like to try the stuff pure. But I can see the appeal. I can see the appeal. And then some people might say, oh, that's a girl's drink. Hey, well, you know what? Oh, well, tough. Half the planet is women. And yeah, why does it matter? Hey, it does. I see some really weird whiskeys I bought today. Yeah, let's do it. You promise not to hate me and stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. What is this? Happy New Year. Oh, I'll have to send a reply. All right, hold on. This is, no, look, Jose, you got to take this within context, okay? I mean, okay. It, it is what it is, okay? Okay. All right, look, I was at Albertsons. You know Albertsons, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in there today, and I'm like, I'm looking at the whiskey, and I'm like overwhelmed because it's unbelievable, right? And at the top of the shelf, there's whiskeys for $70, $80, $90. And in Louisiana, it might be like that in California, too. You could just go to a grocery store and buy whiskey like you're buying a can of, of a beans. Green, green bean. Yeah, yeah, you, can yeah. Just, you don't have to go like, it's not behind a shelf. You just pull it. You can tell your child, oh, baby, go give me some of that uh, tangerine. Yeah. And they can go put yeah. it. In. All right. So that's how it is. Other states, it's like highly restricted. Okay. So I'm already overwhelmed by all this whiskey. I cannot believe it. And then I, I see, they have all these sales tags. You know, it's New Year's Eve. So there's, there's sale. Everything's on sale. There's so much competition. Like 
everybody's like mobbing these stores to buy liquor like Walmart too is like craziness so I'm looking around like this is incredible I can't believe it and then I see this tag and I said what it says $5.99 I said fine hmm. everything else is like $29.99 $39.99 you know and, and people are coming in there respectable people and they're paying their $49.99 so I said I can't resist what is this <laughs> so I look at this thing and it says Canadian Crest special blend yeah I bet it's special it's 80 proof <laughs> and it was $5.99 for a $7.50 nice I said oh my goodness I like those kind I like those Canadian whiskeys and that's a Canadian whiskey blend yeah they, they, they age it like in a sherry cask you know and it's a uh, nice whiskeys there Canadian whiskey with natural flavors. I said, oh, <laughs> but it's Canadian whiskey from Louisville, Kentucky. But I couldn't resist then. It's like the worse it is, I can't, it's like the worse the car wreck, the more you slow down to have to look. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's wonderful when you can come across those and find little hidden gems, you know, where maybe they don't have the marketing like other big companies. Maybe they don't have that. And, but, hey, and even if it's horrible, you only paid $5.99, right? Exactly. And here's another one. I said, this thing just gets crazier and crazier. It's called 75 South. Hmm. Oh, we all know about 75 South, don't we? No, we don't. Yeah. Um, it was $5.99. It's blended whiskey. Oh, and it's got this beautiful write-up about it on the bottle. And I'm thinking, wow, for $5.99, this has got to be something else. Louisville, Kentucky. So, you know, I have some research to do in the upcoming days because I've never heard of these oddball things. And I know it probably nobody else has, but they exist. People buy them. That's what's fascinating. It's like people might be watching and saying, you could have bought something credible. I know, but then it wouldn't, it would have taken the fun out of it. Oh, ooh, ooh, you didn't buy that in the United States. Nope. My mother, she brought me a uh, little four pack of them. Oh boy! And I bought I bought that in Mexico two years ago, and I got to buy I got to drink it. Yeah, so she got me a four pack of them. Like I said, she goes to Mexico regularly, so she's uh she I have her on a hey, you know, just bring me whatever I can get over here. Yeah. So. Hey, well, you had a great idea to do a follow up video with this um, Corbell XS and um. I might do a, a solo video where you know I record it on my camera and I'm sitting yeah. there, whatever. I might do that. Uh, and if you do one, I'll watch it. You know, if you do one, I'll watch it. But um, I think you could. We kind of, and it's my fault mostly getting off track talking about this and that topic. But um, I think you could take this brandy and you could really break it down. It's it's very it's it it, it does have very much different layer layers of flavor so yeah it's it's not a it's not a straightforward brandy obviously they did infuse it with a different you know things vanilla sugar cane um, uh, i believe is orange so yeah oh yeah it's complex for sure now the close out fat boyish a viewer says happy new year ron boy 2017 hey happy new year back to you and then he puts a car and then a behind, he's got a bunch of cars, and then a police cars with sirens on it, and then more police cars with sirens. Hey, don't worry, uh, fat boys. I do not drive on New Year's Eve, like uh, somebody said. Dean Martin said that's amateur hour. There's too many yo-yos out there driving around drunk like a fool, and there's a whole lot of cops out there just waiting for you to make that mistake. Yep, and, and they're, they they're funneling you in. You know, so just stay home, have fun with your friends, have fun with your family. Right. I don't need that. Okay. Well, it was fun. Hey, Jose, I appreciate your idea, and um, I'm glad we got to do this. So I could drink more, but I'm something's telling me now nah, you better you better cool it. <laughs> it's time. So I'm gonna cool it. But you're only at seven o'clock, so you're just getting geared up. I have a feeling. Yeah. I have a feeling. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a couple more beer reviews, but that's really it. Okay, and I drank a Boston Lager, and I bought that Boston uh, Samuel Adams uh, variety pack today. Nice. I'm excited about all those 
uh, interesting beers in that variety pack, by the way. All right. Thanks, folks. That's it. It's over.